Hey guys, it's Marie Haynes here. Wanted to shoot a little video to uh, keep you up to date on the latest things that Google's doing. There have been some significant changes in the last couple of weeks, which is unusual because Google, um, well, I shouldn't say it's unusual. In the past, Matt Cutts from Google has said that Google likes to avoid doing major algorithm updates uh, prior to the holidays. Um, but I think we've seen this for the last couple of years that that hasn't been true. So uh, there have been some significant algorithm updates. Um, this is, uh, I should mention, this content here is from my uh, free version of my newsletter. And uh, if you want to get on the newsletter, you can go to mariehaines.com slash newsletter and uh, you'll find a way to sign up there. Um, and I also will talk a, a little bit later about the paid version that I have, but the free version is going to give you uh, quite a bit of stuff. Um, so you can see that on December 12th of, uh, of last year now, of 2017, there was a significant update uh, that probably has to do with um, quality. There's always quality that's uh, involved, um, but this was a, a strange one. Barry Schwartz from Search Engine Roundtable called it the Maccabees update because it happened during Hanukkah. Um, and he had some great quotes from his site uh, from people who had seen significant drops. And something that Glenn Gabe noticed was that the, a large number of celebrity websites were hit. It used to be that if you were Googling something like Tom Cruise or John Lennon or Barack Obama even, that their personal website would come up first. And when you think about it, that's really not the best search experience because most of the time if I am googling a celebrity celebrity's name I probably want to land on an IMDB page or a news article uh, it's pretty rare that I want to land on their page so I think that Google just tweaked things to make things better for what searchers want um, I thought this was interesting a lot of the celebrity pages really aren't that well SEO'd anyways um, looks like LeBron James uh, needs some work on his meta description um, I guess he can be forgiven for that because he has other talents. Um, so I really don't know exactly what uh, this update is about. Um, Danny Sullivan, now from Google, had quoted uh, a few things on Twitter here, basically saying that uh, there were several updates that happened last week. And that's always the case. Pretty much every day, Google updates three or four things. Uh, but what we do know is that there's something significant that happened on December 12th. In my own clients, I really haven't seen significant change, so it's hard to say exactly what's happening. There was also something that happened on December 25th or 26th. So as a wonderful Christmas gift, Google handed out a bunch of manual actions, which I'm sure was really well received by most people. Um, it seems to me that most of these manual actions were handed out to sites that were heavily using private blog networks. And uh, now Matt Diggity also noted that a number of the sites that were hit uh, were heavily relying on scholarship links. And if that's something that you've used, now if your business has a scholarship and you've uh, gotten some links that way, you know, it's probably okay. If you've used scholarship link building in a really, really uh, scaled up way, and especially if you're trying to get links from every site that could mention scholarships, then it's something that you might want to look at and possibly consider uh, either disavowing some of those links. Um, it's going to be a tough decision because it's hard to know whether those links are helping or not. Uh, but if you've used scholarship link building or PBNs um, in a large scale, then I would be a little bit concerned. Um, it's debatable whether uh, this change was just um, manual actions or whether there was an algorithmic thing that happened on December 26th as well. I found this tweet interesting from Glenn Gabe. Uh, he gave an example of a site that uh, plummeted in the search rankings and there are apparently others as well. Now again with my client data I saw a number of sites that actually saw nice increases December 26th but I can't uh, take credit for uh, for that because it looks like if you look at year-over-year -year data uh, most of these sites actually increase just after Christmas anyways. Um, and so I have not seen any significant patterns. It's something that I'll keep an eye out for. Google has a new rich results testing tool. There's a bit of confusion about this. Uh, some people when it was announced thought that perhaps you could look and see if you could get featured snippets, but this is not the case. Uh, and so if you are using JSON-LD, microdata, or um, RDFA types of uh, 
um, schema then or markup, then uh, you might be able to test it using this tool. Um, here's an example uh, that I found, but um, a lot of the sites that I tested the results were not what I expected to see. So I, it seems to me like this, oh, it even says this is a beta version and uh, it's, it's worth looking into. I think that in the future, this will be something that's much more valuable. Uh, Google put out a blog post recently on more information for mobile first indexing. There's nothing super uh, new in this, nothing new at all really. Um, the newsletter talks about things that you wanna make sure that your site is doing uh, so that when it uh, switches to mobile first indexing that you're not going to suffer. Google also put out some new search quality guidelines for voice searches. And when this first came out, I was pretty excited about it because most of you know I'm uh, pretty, uh, I, I rely heavily on Google's quality raters guidelines. I think that we have, there's tons of tips in there uh, and we've used a lot of the information in those to help uh, some of our clients actually perform better. The voice search guidelines, there's not a whole lot in there. In the um, paid version of the newsletter, I give some examples, although you can see them uh, just by looking at Google's announcement. And really what they're looking at is uh, they're asking search quality raters to do voice searches and, and rate how the answer sounds. Is the answer too long? Is it too wordy? Do they mispronounce things? I think it's kind of neat that Google's trying to make voice results more um, understandable because I think we've all done voice searches where the results were mispronounced or you know something was off. Um, but I, I don't think there's a whole lot that we can use at this point from these other than uh, if you're doing work to win featured snippets, one thing that you want to keep in mind when you do your featured snippets is read your, your text out loud and see, like if somebody actually did a voice search and they got our result as a featured snippet, would it read well? And if not, it might be worth trying to rewrite your content and uh, see, because as Google gets better at figuring out which content actually performs better, better for voice, uh, you might find that, um, you know, the, the better written content actually performs better and wins more featured snippets. There was uh, some type of bug in Google search analytics for um, uh, AMP pages. So if you noticed a big drop on your AMP pages uh, between December 14th and December 18th, it's probably nothing to worry about. This is something interesting on um, starting, so Google announced this before that Chrome is going to start blocking ads on sites that have bad ads. So those are, uh, and I mean, there's all sorts of guidelines Google's put out. You know the type of ads that are bad ads. We're talking about the download buttons that you think you're downloading your software and really you're downloading some type of malware, um, deceptive ads. There's a lot of stuff in the quality raters guidelines about uh, these types of uh, ads that would be considered bad ads. If you're using AdSense on your site, probably you don't have anything to worry about. So now Google said that they're going to start doing this February 15th. And if you want to know whether you are at risk for having some ads blocked, you can go into Google Search Console and um, look at the ad experience report. And uh, you can find that under web tools in Google Search Console. And this ad experience report for most sites that I have in Google Search Console, it says not reviewed. I do have a couple of sites. These are mostly very large clients that um, are, are, are showing that they have been reviewed and uh, that they're passing in terms of ads. I have some sites that I've reviewed in the past that really should have a failing grade here and they have not been reviewed yet. So it's something to, uh, to keep an eye on. Um, a lot of businesses have noticed recently that they've lost their knowledge panel and that's the, uh, uh, as most of you know, the panel that's um, usually on the, the right hand side of the search results uh, if somebody's searching specifically for your business. And uh, it's hard to say what's happening here, but what a lot of people are noticing is uh, it used to be that if you search for their business name, there would be a knowledge panel. And now the knowledge panel only appears if you search for the business name <clears throat> plus the city that they're in. So I think this is probably just a change where Google's trying to make the results uh, more relevant for people. And at this point, there's not a whole lot that we can be doing to, uh, to win those back. But if we find uh, information on how to do that, then I'll pass that on to you. Some of you have the Google Search Console beta. And the part that I like the most from Google Search Console beta is this indexed low interest uh, section. 
And um, AJ Khan noticed uh, that it's missing. Um, and AJ has a fantastic guide that I know Gary Ish referenced it at uh, PubCon on how to use the new Google Search Console beta. Um, and so uh, it, this indexed low interest was really, really interesting because you could find uh, a lot of thin content uh, in that section. So hopefully that comes back soon. But again, it is a beta product, so we don't know uh, what Google's doing with that. Um, I have a lot of stuff on local SEO in this newsletter. Now, a lot of it is only available for the paid uh, subscribers, but this is something that's interesting. Google made some changes to their terms of service uh, to um, explain that it is no longer uh, acceptable to review um, your own business. I think that was always the case, uh, to post negative content about um, a place where you used to work. So if you have a former employee that's leaving you negative reviews, that's against Google's terms of service. And then also kind of makes sense, but it's against Google's terms of service to uh, review a competitor um, and, or to negatively review a competitor. Now, if you find that somebody is doing uh, this against your business, um, there's a bunch of stuff in the paid version on how you can get those reviews removed. Um, oh, sorry, that's in the free version actually here too. Uh, so basically what you want to do is uh, click on uh, this part right here that um, in the review and report it as a, a bad review. Um, and then you usually can get help if you post in the Google My Business Help Forum, but you really do need to have a bunch of evidence. So you can't just say, hey, we got a bad review. That must be a competitor. You, you have to post evidence. And I've seen people posting things like um, screenshots of emails showing that uh, this person actually works or even um, about pages from your competitor saying, you know, this person works for, for them. And so you, you have to show some evidence that uh, the review to, uh, is a fraudulent review. Uh, this is a new thing that businesses, some businesses, can add videos to their Google My Business profile. It's, uh, it doesn't appear to be live for everybody, and there's, uh, it's, it's brand new. So that's something that uh, I really want to take advantage of for our clients. I think it would be fantastic. For example, we have a client who's a realtor, and I think it would be great to have him uh, shoot a video just talking about why he loves real estate and uh, being really personable, and, and that would probably help to get him... Uh, more, uh, more clients, so that would be a, a good thing. There's a bunch of really, really good articles that have been written this month, and I've listed them all here in the free version. Uh, if you have the paid version, we've also uh, taken time to summarize um, a bunch of uh, a bunch of these um, uh, articles, and uh, I think that you'll really find that useful. And that's about it for uh, for this last couple of weeks. We'll see what happens over the next couple of weeks. And uh, I usually try to get my newsletter out every two weeks. And I would love for you to uh, to read the newsletter yourself. Again, just go to mariehaines.com slash newsletter. And if you have any comments, there's a comment section on the newsletter itself. Uh, so thanks again and uh, take care.